So you might have seen that awesome video by Stefan from CNC Kitchen about printing in thin air without any supports. And of course I had to jump the hype train and test the arc slicing. Moreover, I wanted to test whether I will need to make some specific adjustments to my printer to print this, or I can throw just the jig out into the clipper and the magic will happen. Let's start by explaining the idea and the current state of the technology. If you want to try it yourself, okay, there is a project demo on GitHub and it's currently, yeah, it's currently in very, very, very early state of a technical demo. It's not integrated with any slicer, just a bunch of concepts and code pieces that you have to put together. The idea is basically very simple. Instead of trying to make some long spaghetti extrusions when you're printing bridges, uh, it just creates a sets of overlapping arcs and uh, as these arcs are overlapping and supporting themselves um, it basically allows you to print without supports. Usage wise is not quite friendly yet, it's console tool, console g-code generator, uh, you know, so you have to understand a little bit of Python and programming there and plus it cannot just accept any STL yet, it works with polygons, you can select a polygon like this and ask to print a nice demo out of that. Fortunately for the lazy people like me who don't want to bother with the command line interface, Steven, the author of the project, created four samples that I printed out. Uh, these are just g-code samples and if you are downloading any kind of g-code from the internet it's better to see what's going on there um, before printing just in case there is some, I don't know, 600 degree extrusion or something like that. It seems like we're looking at PLA-oriented slicing and 215 degrees hot end and 60 degrees bed, pretty thick layers, 0.4 millimeters and max cooling. I would say that PLA is the best choice as you will need to print as cool as possible for the self-supporting structure magic to happen. I printed all the four files on my old Warren 2.4, Dragon HF hot end and strangely, but all of them printed ok without much additional tuning. The models are pretty small but enough to showcase the technology and I really have mixed feeling about this. Don't get me wrong, uh, this is a wonderful idea and implementation but I don't see it widely adopted just yet. First of all, tuning and implementing this approach would be quite different. You see, currently we are printing bridges with long lines and for long lines the only thing you need to tune is uh, cooling, pressure advance and your extrusion modifier and you can basically spaghetti it as long as you like. Uh, with arcs, each time you print a new piece of arc, uh, arc length changes and this is basically why we are having all the blobs everywhere and why it's not so even when printed. So uh, it won't be that easy to get a uniform quality with all the printers and all the uh, extruder types and all the makes of plastic compared with what we have now. Secondly, and more importantly, a part of your print just wobbles around in the air during the printing and this compromises the structural integrity. Well, it could be okay for some, I don't know, purely aesthetical parts. If you're printing something uh, functional, it would be better to stick with old-fashioned supports. Moreover, wobbling will become worse for uh, some warping plastics like ABS and PETG. Summing up, while well, I don't expect this technology to be implemented as is, I believe that uh, the author Stephen McCullen proposed a wonderful idea that can be adapted in the current slicers and maybe in some years we'll see much better overhangs or even infinite bridges or something like that. Before this happens, unfortunately, we'll have to stick with the good old-fashioned supports and all the pain of removing them and cleaning the part afterwards. Well, that's all I have for you today. Like and subscribe if you want see more of this kind of content and see you next time. All links in the description by the way.